they sent me six of these. So I'm going to give them away to all you guys. And uh, I'm going to tell you how to win one in a second. So what this is, is the Speedy B Bluetooth USB adapter. And it's got a USB port on it. And what you do is you plug it into your flight controller. You plug in anything from a 2S, I think, up to even 6S. I did use it on 6S. And it powers your flight controller. And you can Bluetooth into your flight controller using the Speedy B app. Now, it seems to only work for Betaflight right now, but I'm sure they're gonna add other ones in the future. I don't really have to show you this. I'm pretty sure every single other YouTuber received a bunch of them as well. Uh, I'm thinking of a number between one and 100. The first six people to get as close to the number as possible, if not on the number, within the first 100 comments, I will message and ask for your address. And if you're overseas, I will send it to you. But if it doesn't get to you, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. Next, we have this insanely incredible design. And a while ago, I told you guys about a you know 20 gram, 30 gram frame that was actually durable and it was a five inch frame and it was ridiculous. And this frame comes from Ryan L. And Ryan L, actually, I don't know his last name, but Ryan L runs Quadstar uh, Drones. I just don't remember the name. The name of the website actually changed. It's, it's on the screen and it's on in the description below, absolutely. And he is the record, current record holder, unofficial current record holder for top speed on video with the DVR that he's put on his YouTube channel. It has done 200 miles per hour. And I'll talk about that in a second as well. But first, let's talk about this frame. So this version that I'm showing you, unfortunately, it's a little embarrassing that I don't even have it anymore. I've just completely de demolished the frame, <laughs> like durability testing it, I guess you could say. Um, I don't have a current prototype. He's gone through literally hundreds of iterations like his mind ryan is a is a very very interesting guy and i'll talk about him in a second as well which he is more interesting than his designs themselves so the design in general the one you're looking at here has like this z frame structure where the front props are facing downwards and the rear props are facing upwards i've flown a couple frames like this in the past and even frames that don't even have this this good of a weight distribution and they just fly weird they they don't quite handle the as like smoothly and accurately as you would expect. And yes, this Z configuration does give you cleaner air on the rear props, but the weight distribution on the Z axis up and down is so awkward and weird that it just makes the quad feel odd. And a lot of people will say, you know, well, you need a custom mix. And I did actually play with custom mixes on this frame. They really didn't make any difference at all. And maybe I just wasn't doing it right but I couldn't get it to fly really any differently with the custom mix. I couldn't get it to fly better. Tuning it gave me some degree of, of improvement, but again, just the Z configuration and this vertical distribution of weight is very awkward. So that's why the one that's for sale right now has gone back towards a regular flat, like all the props facing upwards. Anyways, the frame, everybody wants to know how's the durability. The durability of the frame is surprisingly good. The one that I had, the version I have was like 35 grams and I did crash it a bunch of times. Um, I don't really have many pictures or videos of it because I did sign an NDA to have access to it. And I can't, I, I mean, I don't, I didn't take any video or pictures. I didn't even save much DVR. I have like three DVR files of which I really am only willing to show one right now. And um, it's a very, very interesting frame. Ryan is an, complete engineer like 100 percent through and through engineer so he doesn't do compromise <laughs> like just even designing this frame was a compromise for him because he designs insanely aerodynamic crafts that are so insanely well balanced that they just perform incredible this is a guy that does 160 plus miles per hour on 5s now if you remember the drl speed record was 179 miles per hour and it was like 161 or something uh, consistent, as in they went back and forth, and that's the speed they got. And that was on 8S. They were doing, they were doing those the 160 miles per hour on 8S. Now Ryan is doing it on 5S, and he's not even pushing the quad. Now he has kind of made a leap in aerodynamics and balance and understanding of all this stuff, and he has actually achieved 200 miles per hour based on the GPS of the flight controller. Now, when you look at the video, you may think, well, that doesn't look like 200 miles per hour. Well, he is pretty high off the ground and it's kind of deceiving. You really do have to go by the GPS. And a lot of people will say GPS is inaccurate and well, whatever. His quads are insanely stupid aerodynamic and just crazy fast. 
The frame in general flies flies really interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to spoil it for you. Those that want to fly it or try it, please support him because he is such an original thinker and such an out-of-the-box thinker. I mean, I tried to design frames like his frame and I, I just fell flat on my face. I mean, his his thought process and his degree of engineering optimization and the way he designs it and structures it and thinks about these things, they are so crazy optimized and just so finely tuned that it's it's wild. And he is an incredibly interesting guy, insanely talented, one of those beautiful mind kind of thinkers. And it, it just it deserves all of the all, all of the support from everybody because of the effort that he's put into this. Next, I want to talk about this quad. So this is my primary acro quad, acro quad, and I didn't crash and pop the mount off. I actually ripped it off because I really don't like the 30 degree mount that I had. I thought I would like it because I like flying fast forward. So I and my quads are relatively lighter than the majority of acro quads out there. So I fly at you know steeper tilt to compensate. So I thought 30 degrees would be better, but in reality, it makes my rolls look weird, and I really prefer a 20 degree uh, GoPro mount, or actually like somewhere between 20 and 25 degrees. So I just popped it off and uh, let it rest on the screw here. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I'm gonna talk about tuning now. So still to this day, one of the primary questions I get asked about is tuning. How do I tune my quad? How do I get a good tune? How do I get it to fly right? How do I get it to fly well? And I've made a, you know, step one tuning video way back when that got a lot of views and a lot of people asking questions and people still post questions on that video to this day but i haven't made a part two because i suck at like i've been doing this a while and i've tried to tune and i've tried to learn and i know generally what these numbers do and mean i mean i have this intuition because i played with them so much over so many different firmware versions but i still suck at tuning if you told me you would give me a million dollars for a perfectly tuned quad, I would never, I would never see that money, <laughs> never. And so I tune very differently in modern times. And so I'm gonna talk about that in a second, but first I'm gonna talk about these props. And these props have a very significant factor as to what I'm gonna discuss about the tuning. Azure, so they sent me their newest prop, the, the 5140, which is their acro prop. And I was like, well, it's okay. It, it just it feels the same. It just doesn't have the same speed. And I was putting it on my 600 gram, you know, acro quads, some with high KV, some with low KV. You know, I've tried 5S on it. And it, it does generally feel a little bit more in control because it does have a lower pitch, which I'll talk about in a second as well. But it's, it's for the most part, on the heavier quads, it feels just like it has less speed. It has everything else the same, just has a little bit less speed. And so there's actually a pretty drastic difference between how a prop feels on a lighter quad and a heavier quad. If you put this prop on like this 200 gram racer, it feels totally different, totally different than on a 600 gram quad. On a heavier quad, you're more in a hover state than an actual fast forward flight state because you have so much heft and weight that you have to keep it up. So in a hover state, props really don't make a feel difference. Like it's hard to explain, but you know, if you're like a phantom, if you change the props on a phantom, you wouldn't feel the difference. I and mean, it still flies. It's just hovering around. It doesn't do anything. It's like a blimp. Anyways, the reason why I want to talk about these props is because this is the 5040 prop, and this is the 50, or sorry, 5140, and this is the 5150 prop. Now, I'm not so certain that these pitches are actually accurate in the sense that it's actually a 50 and a 40 pitch, but you can definitely see when you compare them that the purple one, which is the, the higher pitch, is definitely steeper. And I have confirmed with Azure that the only difference between these two blades is the actual twist, the actual pitch of the blade. One is more steep, one is less steep. Other than that, they weigh the same, they look the same, everything else is identical. And this is a unique situation that we have a relatively shallow pitch and a relatively aggressive pitch prop. I actually can't think of any other props that are exactly the same other than the pitch maybe the cyclone but the cyclone came out in a 45 at the very beginning or a relatively speed, steep pitch from the beginning and then it became a steeper and an even steeper pitch prop so it's difficult to compare and the reason why i'm talking about that is because the way shallower pitch props work is different than the way steep pitch props work and the best explanation i have for that is that when your prop is too steep and you're in a hover state or you're just trying to make static thrust 
the prop actually needs to spin up to a higher RPM to make thrust. Now I know that's kind of counterintuitive, but if you, if you think about it, like a, a paddle pushing through the air, if your paddle has a really steep pitch and you're just kind of pushing through the air, you're not actually blowing air down, you're not actually capturing the air and blowing it down, you're kind of just wafting through the air and you've got a bunch of vortex crap coming off the end of the prop. If you have a shallower pitch, yes, it might take more revolutions and speed for you to generate like thrust, but your blade isn't stalling. You don't have those characteristics where you're just drifting the prop through the air and nothing is happening. It's easier for it to capture some some air and push it down. It's easier to function on the air with a lower pitch. And based on that explanation, it's a sort of common thought that lower pitch props generally tend to have more immediacy of punch or immediacy of control versus steeper pitch props because the props are more effective at low RPMs because they don't have that stall state. Now I hope that wasn't totally confusing and the way I'm going to use that information is to tell you that in general lower pitch props tend to have more control in the air. So to my surprise when I compared the lower pitch prop versus the heavier pitch prop on my 600 gram acro quad, I was surprised to notice that the heavier pitch prop actually had the same kind of control, but it's primarily because I was running them on 2500 kV motors. I wasn't running them on a higher kV motor, and it is pretty intuitive and obvious that if you have a lower pitch prop, it will be less effective at generating thrust at high RPM because it has a lower pitch in general. So on top of that, you have a lower pitch, so you have a lower uh, final pitch velocity at the top RPM. Like, you need more RPM in order to get a lower pitch prop to go fast. That's just intuitive. But that also changes when you put things on a lighter quad setup. So what I have here is a 2205 motor. This is a relatively small motor. It's not a low torque motor, but it's not a high torque motor. And especially up at the higher RPMs, it doesn't have the height to keep pushing the blade faster and faster and faster. When you have a 2207, you have that kind of torque up at the top of the RPM range to keep going faster and faster because the motor height does give you that ability. If you had a nine height motor, you would get even more torque at the top end of the RPM range and you would get even more speed, but you'd also use a bunch more battery as well. So fast forward a little bit. If you have a lightweight quad with a relatively small motor, you need to have a relatively light load prop, not a light prop as in weight only, just a light load prop. You can't be running super paddle props, although it does fly fine with super paddle props, but when you put a lower pitch prop and you have higher KV, you have more throttle, I don't want to say resolution, but you have more, not even accuracy of throttle, but your throttle does more. Like you, the prop starts working at a lower RPM, as in you start making meaningful thrust at a lower RPM. It's not like this heavier pitch prop where you kind of don't have much thrust up at the, down at the bottom bottom, and then once you hit that correct RPM range, then it just waves on, it pours on, and then once you get up in the higher RPMs, it tapers off heavily because the motor just doesn't have the torque to keep going faster and faster. And speed doesn't always have to do with prop pitch, it has to do with a balance of the prop, the motor, and the battery's ability to supply the necessary amps to get the motor to spin up to speed, as we discussed in the other speed quad. So what I found was the steeper pitch prop and this lower pitch prop, they actually feel like they're pretty much similarly as fast. And on a light quad with high KV, the lower pitch prop does have a significant amount of more control. But if you put them on a heavy quad, they don't feel the same. If you want to run this prop for Acro on a heavier quad, you will need higher RPM. You will need 2600 kV because in general, it just feels slow and you don't have any benefit of improved control. I actually prefer this steeper pitch prop for you know, acrobatic flying if I was to use this prop for Acro, which I don't use this prop for Acro. Now, based on all that, um, this prop is a lighter load, so your PIDs might change a little bit, but that's not even what I would change with respect to PIDs and tuning, and that's what I'm going to get to right now. After all that, I forgot to mention why I'm actually super interested in these two props, not just because they asked me to test them again, but because this is a rare opportunity to verify a lot of the stuff I've been talking about, and I can't do it because I don't have the proper equipment. So this is a relatively shallow pitch prop, and this is a relatively steep pitch prop. 
and because they're the same exact design except for that you know pitch there is a way that somebody could verify how much the steeper pitch prop is actually stalling in the air compared to the shallower pitch prop and how much the pitch actually does make a difference with respect to thrust creation. So what I would ask is somebody to put these two props on the same motor with the same voltage and the same everything and you know, set your thrust stand to reproducible, reproducible throttle points, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%. And then measure how much pull you're getting, how much thrust generation you're getting on the bench. Now, in the air, it's a dynamic environment and things are totally different, but this is the bench is gonna be a static environment, so it's gonna be even more predictive of or it's gonna be in more support if it's what I'm expecting it to be. And what I expect is that the shallower pitch prop will in general have a more linear thrust creation and the steeper pitch prop will kind of have some thrust creation and then it'll have a hump of creation and bending the, and depending on which motor you're using once you get into the higher rpm ranges it will level off it'll taper off much quicker than the shallow pitch, pitch prop now uh, RPM does increase the drag of the prop and so the shallower pitch prop spinning at high RPMs will increase drag and when you're in a static environment you get all these vortices and all this various things so generally once you get at the high RPMs things get all funny anyways but in general I want to see if this, this steeper pitch prop has that hump of power. Let's go back to this quad. Now I discussed briefly that tuning in modern times is very different than tuning you know, three years ago, three years ago, our quads all flew like absolute crap. And it was a miracle that they even flew. I don't know how we even put up with it. But now we have stuff that flies really well. The firmware is really good. The PID controllers are really amazing. The filters are really incredible. And I almost never touch my PIDs ever. And it looks like my quads fly perfect, but honestly, they don't fly perfect. I'm often flying around the crappy characteristics of my quad. But once I got these props, and I, I love these props so much because of how just quick the response is and how, how smoothly they fly, I actually put some effort into tuning yet again. I actually attempted to tune this quad to as close to perfection as I've ever felt any quad. And the way I tune in modern times, again, a big disclaimer, I am no master at tuning in any way, shape, or form but I have done this a lot, so I'm just giving you my experience and my general recommendations for what to look at. And today, tuning is not the same as it was before. Like I said, we have a lot more control with respect to tune and how the quad flies. So we have something called the D set point, something called the D transition. Our PID controllers are different. Our filter settings are different. We have minimum th uh, throttle, which is now in a percentage range. So it's a little bit weird. And the quad still has odd characteristics based on how we fly. We still have prop wash, although there is a way, I mean, nowadays it's, it's almost completely gone on everything if you have the proper balance. So prop wash and filtering in general, I'll briefly go over that. Filtering is a totally different animal. If your quad has, you know, oscillations, if your motors run hot, if things are oscillating and wobbly in general, that's to do with your filters. It's entirely to do with your soft mounting or <clears throat> your props or some weird thing that's going on, some resonance of the frame or something that's going on. You can try soft mounting your flight controller. You can try unsoft mounting your flight controller, soft mounting your motor, unsoft mounting your motor, changing props, all sorts of things you can try, changing your filters, tuning your filters. Tuning your filters usually works the best. And having a tuned filter is not the bad, not the worst thing, even with a dynamic filter. But that's a totally different animal. And prop wash is, again, a totally different animal. Quickly go over prop wash. I suck at PID tuning. I generally only increase or decrease the P's just to get my prop wash handling within a general limit. If you have a setup where your camera and your battery is on top, or generally a setup where your, your overall CG is pretty close to the prop line and it's nice and tight in the middle, you will have a much, much easier, way, way easier time tuning out prop wash. And you probably won't even have prop wash on a stock tune. If you do, like on this quad, if I put a 1300 battery on here, or I put a 1500 battery on here, or I put a 1300 that's long, or a 1500 that's long, I get totally different characteristics. So like my infinity batteries that are longer, when I put it on here, I get stupid prop wash. It's really annoying, I don't even fly that battery. If I put my tiny little tattoo cube 1300 battery that weighs 160 grams on here, I have zero prop wash. If I put a um, 
China Hobby line, 1300 on here, zero prop wash. If I put a 1500 on here, it gets a little bit of prop washy, a little bit weird. So I generally stick to a battery geometry and weight that works well for this quad. And I tune to that as well. Every tiny thing that you change on the quad does have to do, does change the way the quad flies and tunes. Okay, so now, again, fast forwarding to how I actually tune nowadays. So the way I tune this quad and what I look for is very different than what I used to look for back in the day. You know, I omit uh, vibrations, I omit prop wash. I look for how does it actually handle with the stick? What's the stick feel? And does it have um, like dipping on the corners where if you pump the gas, the quad kind of dips a little bit, maybe to a corner or something. Is that handling very well? Now the dipping has to do with a really crappy 4-in-1 or ESC system or a generally better ESC system. We do have anti-gravity now and I do almost on all my quads set anti-gravity to 2.5 or around 2 to 2.7 and my breakpoint or my anti-gravity threshold is usually around 350, 300 to 350 depending on how much dipping I have. Some 4-in-1s have a better time managing this than others, particularly the SpeedX 4-in-1 is pretty good. The um, Tattoo ESCs from back in the day were great. The um, Acon 4-in-1 is good. The $30 flight controller is good. The Hobby Wing, um, not flight controller, $30 4-in-1 is good. The Hobby Wing uh, 6S 4-in-1 is also excellent. It's also 32-bit. It's great. After that is all said and done and figured out, then I look at my detransition and deset points. So I've talked about, I have another video on detransition and set point, but I'll briefly go over it. Detransition is how sharp the response is to your stick inputs. So if you, you know, move the roll a little bit really quickly, the quad responds super quick if your set point is very high. In general, the higher your set point, the more twitchy the quad feels, the more kind of connection, I guess you could call it, to the stick it feels. If you lower it below one, you start to feel like a general smoothness or a general fluffiness, I guess you could say, with respect to the stick. A set point of one is a one-to-one -one ratio in that it responds you know, one-to-one -to, -one to your stick inputs. Now where that changes is that if you have a super responsive prop like this prop that is super light and is super duper ultra responsive, it can, it can make it artificially feel like you have a higher set point. So you can actually lower your set point significantly and have the same kind of accuracy of feel. If you're running like a super duper heavy prop like this, like the Zor blade, it's, it's heavier, it's a higher load blade, it takes more to push this prop through the air, so you will need to probably increase your set point to not make the quad feel overall sluggish when you give it stick inputs. So right off the bat, the first thing I did to try and tune this quad is to adjust my set point. And once I adjusted my set point, I achieved, I mean, I, you can see it on the screen, my set point is now at almost zero, which is astonishing to me because on a heavier prop, it feels like absolute doo-doo <laughs> if your set point is that low. Um, but on this prop, because it's so responsive and it's so like really, really quick at responding, a set point that's super low does actually work. And you have that added kind of fluffiness and smoothness to the stick. So now my, you know, old person fingers, which is old by comparison because these, all these expert pilots are now like 12 years old, actually work well because it kind of smooths out my, you know, wobbly, jittery hands a little bit. And the next thing I would look at is the transition. Now what the transition is, is how quickly the quad responds to offset. So you have, the, if, you, if you do a roll movement, you have the initiation of the movement where you first start moving the stick, but then you have the stopping of the movement where you stop moving the stick. So you have initiation, then stop. So initiation, then stop. And what the transition does is it modulates how accurately the quad responds to the stop portion of the transition, as it's called, the transition. I don't know why it has a D to it. I don't, I don't know any of this stuff. This is all based on just feel experience of playing with these things. So once you drop the set point all the way down, it generally makes the stick feel super soft and mushy in general. So in return, you can put the D transition all the way up or higher, generally much higher. I usually on heavier props, I have my set point set to one or a little bit above one even, 
and my transition set to about 0.7 because I like that kind of soft stop. You know, like a really nice soft stop to my stick movements. And it just looks nice in camera because it's not like a quick jittery stop, it's a very smooth stop. But because my transition is so low, I can push my set point all the way up. And the difference is that now I have a quad that feels like it's super in control because of how responsive the prop is, but it has this kind of fluffy sensation to it when I fly. And when you look at the video, you see this fluffy sensation. Now the last thing that I tune is my minimum prop RPM or my idle percentage. And with this prop, that does make a very big difference because it's such a lightweight prop and it's such a low pitch and it has such a thin, it's such a thin blade in general that it doesn't do anything <laughs> until it actually starts spinning a little bit. So while this blade has such a wide kind of blade, thick, it's so wide, it has the ability to potentially do more at a lower RPM, you might be okay with a um, idle or idle percentage that's much lower. And the, I think the default percentage on, on Betaflight and Butterfly and all these things are like around 4%. Um, the percentage on mine is 6%. On this prop, it's six percent, and the way I tune that is that you know I just punch the throttle and I let go and I see what happens. If the, if the quad starts to wiggle around a little bit, or I'm like diving or smoothly like crossing over a tree or something, if it wiggles around, then I know I need to increase my idle speed. And what's happening is the quad is it's when I cut the throttle or I, when I reduce the throttle too quickly, the quad is reducing the RPM of the motors, but it's also reducing its ability to actually function and the PID system to actually function and keep the quad in control. So then it's having to, you know, increase the speed of the props to get it to manage. And a lot of people would say, well, you just need to push up the eye gains to manage that because that's what I does. It manages, you know, making sure the quad is stable in the air. To which I would say, if you adjust your eye gains, then all of your PIDs are going to be, be going to be messed up and you're going to introduce prop wash into the system. So don't increase your eye gains. Don't even touch your PIDs. Once you figure out the prop wash and you get it to satisfactory levels, don't even bother touching your PIDs because you're just going to make it worse. I'm convinced that very few, few people in this world can actually tune a quad. And a lot of times you will try to tune your PIDs and you will end up with something way worse than default. So you just go back to default. So that's why I say, look at things outside of the PIDs. Everybody likes to focus on PID tuning because you have all these cool numbers and you like to mess with stuff. But don't. the less you mess with it, the better off it is. The PIDs are set such that they are good for a pretty wide window of quads, pretty wide window of setups and you know power and performance and weight distributions. They work pretty well. If you have a smaller quad, you're gonna have to change them. If you have a brushed quad, you're gonna have to change them. If you have a huge quad, you're gonna have to change them. That stuff changed. But if you're within that window of like a five inch acro, whatever quad, it's gonna be pretty darn good. I wouldn't recommend you mess with the pits too much. And in the future, they're gonna be going away. So dynamic pids will come out soon where the quad will retune itself based on the environment it's in. Because if you go to a high altitude environment, your tune totally goes to crap and everything changes. Or if it's cold out, your tune also gets weird and wonky. And apparently the gyro even responds a little differently based on humidity and weather conditions. PIDs are, it's a moving target. You can't get it perfect all the time, always. So that's why I'm focusing on things outside. So once I got the quad to stay in control when I dropped the throttle, then this started happening. The quad started flying, you know, incredible. Like it went from this kind of sort of good, you know, really nice agile feel to the props, to this thing that just feels like absolute butter. Like it feels so smooth. Like I can't even do anything to make it unsmooth. And it's not just because I have experience and I'm skilled. It's because it quad, the quad just flies right. And like I've said in the past, if you were to fly, if you're if you're an intermediate pilot and you're you know you're a little bit shaky on the stick still, and you were to fly Johnny Share's quad or Mr. Steele's quad, you would immediately improve because their quads just fly right. They just fly correct. And I, I don't do anything special. I just kind of tend and tailor to these small little features here and there. Again, I'm in no way an expert at tuning of anything, but I've just been doing this a lot and I recognize how the quad changes based on the settings that I give it and things. I know this is a long video. I have a bunch of other stuff still. The, um, the new controller from uh, Underground FPV is coming. It's actually shipping, I think, on Monday, tomorrow. 
so I'm going to get that soon. I'm really looking forward to it. The Ishin goggles have not gotten any better magically. Um, yeah, things are coming in general. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to floss. I hope that tuning instruction was helpful.